Okay, so tomorrow's test is going to cover all of section 4.3. So the A, B, C, D, E, and F, as well as 4.4, which was the completing the square. Tomorrow's test will have 10 questions. Of those 10 questions, you are going to be half of them, five questions, you're gonna ask to write an equation. So they're either gonna say, write the equation of the parabola, given the vertex and the focus, or write the equation of the ellipse, given maybe a vertex and an at, um, a covertice or a focus. So you're given different pieces of it, and you're gonna to have to write equations. Then you're gonna have two questions from 4.4, where you're going to need to complete the square. I'm not gonna tell you which ones you're completing the square for, but definitely you'll have two different ones. Um, after you complete the square, you're gonna also have to tell me all the different parts. So you'll have to tell me if it's a parabola, you'll tell me the vertex, the focus, the directrix. One of the completing the square questions, you'll also have to graph. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So just like you did on the quiz. Um, so that's seven of the questions. And then the other one, you'll have one more graphing. So out of the two completing the square, you're still also finding everything. But one of them, you also have to graph. And then you'll have one other question where you're gonna have to graph like you did on the quiz you'll find all the parts and then graph it. And then two other questions where all you're gonna do is find all the parts. Whether it's a parabola and you're finding the focus directrix, um, axis of symmetry, all of that, just like the quiz. So what I mean by that is if I go and show you the quiz that we took, so the finding parts were just like the same questions you did on the quiz. So 10 questions in total, five equations, and then the rest are finding the parts. Two of those finding the parts are gonna be graphing. Also two of them, you're gonna need to complete the square first. So then now what I can do is I can work out anything you guys wanna see from the review. Um, the review is a nice reflection of this test. I think it covers everything. Um, so we can work out questions from that review that's posted. You do have the solution file. Okay, so this is the review that is there posted for you. And what I'm going to do right now. Oh, also one other thing I want to show you. You see this? Um, I'm going to be posting this. We're actually gonna give you this formula sheet. Now, it doesn't tell, all it tells you is the standard form. It doesn't give you the formulas for when the vertex is at the center. Uh, I mean, when the vertex is at zero, zero for the parabola. Um, but just remember, that's the H and the K would just be zero. So just remember, you could also know that it's X squared equals four PY. And then this one, when this is when the center would be at zero, zero, or y squared equals four px. This is the document that I'm gonna give you. Um, you know, maybe it'll help ease a little anxiety, um, but I'll post this on Canvas. You don't have to print it out. I will print it out for you. Um, I just got this, so that's why I haven't posted it yet. Yes, Marcus. Okay, so when it's the x squared, then it's gonna be the u or the upside down u. Whenever it's the y squared, that's the c and the backward c. And the way that you can tell, the normal c, p is positive. The backward c, your p value, your four p value would be negative. This would be a negative number here. So four p would be negative and this would be positive. Same thing here, this is the positive this would be negative when it's upside down. So when it's x squared, it's vertical up and down. And when it's the y squared in the parabola, it's the c and the backward c. Does 
that make sense? Okay. All right, let me go ahead and do those two problems. I just wanted to show you that, that I will be posting it. I will print it out for you. Um, maybe just a little bit of help here. Now, obviously, these are the two asymptote equations. You have to figure out which one goes with which. So go ahead and do number three. So this is 4.3F, and this is number three. And... This one, it says, find the standard form of the equation of the hyperbola with the given characteristics. So the center is at the origin, 0, 0, given a foci of 0, comma, plus and minus 8. And then it's also giving asymptotes of y equals plus and minus 6x. So again, this is a hyperbola because that was the 4F uh, homework. So here's my center. I've got a foci here at positive eight, negative eight. So I can see that my graph is vertical. Since my center's at the origin, I'm using the Y squared um, minus X squared, and then A squared, B squared equals one. I can also see that my C value here is the distance from the center to the foci. So my C is going to be 8. And let's see what else we can do here. I can now also do my asymptote here. So since it's a Y squared, then I knew that this 6, 6 over 1, is going to be a over b. So let's see what else do I know. Um, I'm going to solve this. a equals 6b. And now what I can do is also do my, I'm going to eventually be using c squared equals a squared plus b squared. What I can do here is plug in. Uh, let's see, what can I plug in? All right, let me go ahead and plug in this for my a and I'm going to solve for b so I could put 64 here because if c is 8 c squared is 64 I'm going to leave the a squared and then for b no I take that back I'm going to put sorry I am going to put 6b here and square it and leave the b squared. So I'm taking this and putting it here and I'm gonna square it. So 64 equals 36 b squared plus b squared. <clears throat> I can add these like terms. 37 b squared equals 64 divide by 37. 64 over 37 equals b squared. Good so far? Okay, now what I can do is plug it back in now to get a squared. So I'm still doing this one again <clears throat> because your goal here <clears throat> is to get a squared and b squared. 64, I'm gonna leave the a squared this time. And then b squared, I can put 64 over 37. Oh my goodness. All right, so I need to find a common denominator here. So it's 37. So 37 times 64 is 2,368. So I'm turning the whole number 61 over four, or 61, 64 over one to give a common denominator of 37. I'm multiplying top and bottom by 37. And now I can subtract 64 over 37. And then minus 64, and I get 2,304 over 37 equals a squared. So now that I have a squared and b squared, I'm going to put it back in. So it was the y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. 
Now, be aware that when you put in this, this could be a valid answer on some standardized test where they can let you leave a fraction and a fraction. However, for WebAssign, what it wanted you to do was take this 37 and move it to the numerator. So then this final answer would have been 37y squared over 2,304 minus 37x squared over 64 equals one. Same assignment. Um, you were given vertices of zero comma three, eight comma three, and then an asymptote of y equals three fourths x and y equals six minus three fourths x. This is actually in y equals mx plus b form. What they ended up doing, the equation that you guys are used to, um, this y equals k plus or minus, if it was a over b or b over a, x minus h, this is point slope. These both here for this question, they distributed the slope and then they combine the k. So they put it in y equals mx plus b form here. Now, um, let me go ahead and see if this is horizontal or vertical. So vertices 1, 2, 3, um, 0, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 3. So you can see that it's going to be transversing um, the x-axis here. So I need to find the midpoint between these, and this is gonna be my center. So the midpoint, I could do the midpoint formula for this. It's zero plus eight divided by two, three plus three divided by two. So my midpoint is the order pair, four comma three. One, two, three, four. So that's my center point. Good so far? Okay. So because it transverses the x-axis, the equation I'm using is x minus h squared minus y minus k squared equals one. So I already know my h and k is four and three. Now what I need to do is find the value of a, a squared and b squared. Now I can already find a by just counting how far away the center is from each of the vertices, and I can see that the center is gonna be four away. So my A value is four, so A squared is 16. Now what I need to do is figure out B squared, and again, I can use my asymptote. So because it is transversing the x-axis, I know in my asymptote here, it's gonna be B over A. And then I'm going to set B over A equal to 3 over 4. Well, I already know A is 4. So then automatically, I can see that B is 3. But you could cross multiply or fill in B over 4. Take Now put A, what it equals. Cross multiply. You really don't have to. But again, if you do, 4. And then B equals 3. So then B squared is going to be 9. So now I can fill in B squared, A squared, and my center. So final answer here would be X minus four squared over 16, Y minus three squared over nine equals one. All right, now four, four. Do all hondros, four, four. And you said number three? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so for number, this is WebAssign 4.4, number three for Alejandro. And again, you may have had the same exact question. So just like on WebAssign, you're going to have to complete the square first and then find all the missing pieces. So this one had... 
4x squared plus 16y squared minus 8x minus 64y plus 64 equals 0. So notice both x squared and y squared are positive. This is an ellipse. When x squared and y squared are going to be different signs, then it would be a hyperbola. Now I'm going to put my x's together, leave a blank, blank space, put my y's together, leave a blank space, and also move this constant to the other side. So I'm going to put 4x squared next to negative 8x, leave a blank space, put the 16y squared, put it next to the 64y, leave a blank space, and then it equals negative 64. Now remember, whenever you complete the square, the number in front of x squared must be one. So for the x's, I need to divide out a four first. For the y's, I'm gonna divide out 16. And then this is still the negative 64. Now I can begin my process of completing the square for the blue one, which is the x's, and for the red ones. So for the blue one, take the b term, divide it by two, and square it, negative one squared. So that's what I like to fill in here, what it was before it was squared. Now on the other side, remember we're gonna take the four, we would have been adding one, so I have to times the four by the one that we would have added, so I'm gonna be adding positive four. If I wanna just go ahead and factor this right now, it turns into this. Now I'm gonna do the red one. I'm gonna take the B term, divide it by two and square it. And I get positive four. So what I would be doing here is 16 times four. So I'm adding 64 here. Over here, I would fill in that I'm adding negative two squared. So then when I go to factor it, it's 16 and then y minus 2 squared. And then here I got to simplify this. Well, 64 plus negative 64 is 0, so this just becomes a 4. Remember, standard form is equal to 1. So what I need to do is make this equals 4 here equal 1, so I divide everything by 4. This fraction simplifies, so I'm just left with x minus 1 squared. The red, 16 divided by 4, becomes 4, and now it equals 1. So now we have our standard form of our ellipse. Now I can answer all the questions, and this is what you'll have to do tomorrow on the test. So my center, remember this is h, this is K, so my center point is 1, 2. Next, what I can do here is I need to find my A value, my B value, my C value. Now, notice all of these, you could assume that it's got an over 1. Um, actually, I'm going to put this one back. Uh, let's see. I could swing that back. And really what was here is, I could leave that as a one-fourth. Because really what you did was you swung that up. Does that make sense? All right, so fix that. All right, so my A value is the one my B value is the one-fourth. And then to find C, C squared equals A squared minus B squared. C squared equals, and I can square this, A squared is one. Actually, no, that's already squared, sorry. This is squared. And then B squared is one-fourth. That was squared. I didn't have to write it again. All right, so let me fill it in. So 1 minus 1 fourth, c squared equals 3 fourths, square root it, 
and c is equal to plus and minus the square root of 3 over 2. Now I need to find my focus and my, vertis, my vertices. So my vertices, I'm using the a value, and I'm going to take my center, and because my major axis is x, this is where I'm going to add my a value to. Um, actually, let's see. This is hk. So I'm going to, since it's the a squared is under the x, I'm adding a plus and minus to the h. So here I would get 1 plus 1, comma 2, because when I square root it, it's plus and minus 1, comma 2. And then 1 minus 1, comma 2. So I have a vertice at 2, 2, and 0, 2. For the focus, I'm going to add it to the same thing. So for the foci, I'm going to be doing h plus and minus c, comma k. So my h value is 1, and then I would put minus the square root of 3 over 2, comma 2, 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2, comma 2. Those are your two foci points. And let's see what else. Let's do the covertices. So if B squared is 1 fourth, when I square root that, B is equal to plus and minus 1 half. So for the covertices, I'm going to take my H and my K. This time I'm going to add and subtract B to the K. So for covertices, it would be 1 and then I would do 2 minus 1 half, and then 2 plus 1 half. So this would be 1 comma 1 and a half, and 1 comma 2 and a half, and those are your covertices. And then you would graph these seven order pairs on your graph. Connect them and make an ellipse. So this is 4.4. And this is a parabola. So this is a number one question. You may have had the same question, or maybe your question was slightly different numbers. So this is web assigned number one from 4.4. You were given 8x plus y squared plus one equals 2y minus 36. So my goal here is to get the square term all by itself on the left side and then move the non-squared variable and the constant to the other side. So what I can do here is move the 2y back. And now I have 8x plus y squared minus 2y plus 1 equals negative 36. I can move the 8x over. y squared 2y plus 1, negative 8x minus 36, move the 1, y squared minus 2y equals, and let me leave a blank space, because that's the square that I'm going to complete. All right, so then now what I need to do is complete the square for the y squared term. So negative b, or take the b term, divide it by 2, square it. So in here, I'll put negative 1 squared. Over here, I'm adding 1. So then I can factor this. Negative 8x minus 36. Now I'm going to pull a GCF out over here so I can get my 4p term. So y minus 1 squared um, equals, pull out a negative 8 here, and this is actually going to be a fraction, 36, actually let me pull out a 4 instead, 8 doesn't go into 36. So if I divide them both by negative 4, I get x equals, or let's see, negative 4x, and then that's a 9. 
and the, the problem the format that we should be leaving this in is y y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h this number here there can't be a coefficient in front of the x or the y so what i need to do is factor out a negative 8 on both of these and then it becomes negative 8 x minus 9 over 2 because i can simplify 36 over 8 it becomes positive i can divide these both by 4 and this becomes 9 over 2. So that's your, going to be your standard form. So again, just remember when you complete the square, this has to have just a 1 in front. So then now I can find my vertex by plugging, pulling out the h and the k. So negative 9 over 2, comma 1. And then my p value, so 4p is equal to negative 8, divide by 4, p is equal to negative 2, and I need to add the p value to the non-squared variable. So in the original problem, my non-squared variable was x, so I'm going to take the vertex and I'm going to add p to it, and then it'll become comma k. This is for the fo focus. So I need to find a common denominator here. So I can turn the negative 2 into negative 4 over 2, which turns into negative 13 over 2. So that's your focus point. For the directrix, it's the opposite of p, still to the non-squared variable. Non-squared variable was x. So I take the x, the negative 9 over 2, but I'm going to add the, the p value now because it was originally negative. So negative 9 over 2, 4 over 2, x equals negative 5 over 2. And then that's your directrix. Good there? And your axis of symmetry, because you also have to do that, is going to be y equals negative 9 over 2. You would go to graph this it's going to look like a backward C because it's a Y squared and your 4P value here was negative. <clears throat> any other questions from the review, from any web assign, anything that I've given you for homework or that review? I'll be glad to work out.